Dragon Chronicles Black Tears is an early access card battler, but not card battler, deck building, but not deck building, story driven, difficult RPG, which sees us guide a group of heroes through various dangerous dungeons. Backed up by a growing village, we fight against monsters in an apocalyptic fantasy world where clothes are hard to come by unless you're male. <laughs> Boobies. After many hours filled with harsh lessons, seeing my heroes die more often than Sean Bean, I can tell you if Dragon Chronicles Black Tears is a real fun or a refund. The world fell after a powerful dragon spread corruption, turning every living being into monsters. Tasked to fight off this calamity, we obtain heroes in form of cards and fight our way through various levels, growing in difficulty. First up, this is not a deck building or even card battling game. Each creature is simply shown as a card, but that's all. Far more similar to games like Darkest Dungeon, our characters gain experience points, learn new skills and build up a settlement. To gain experience points, we go on four-man expeditions in the mobile gamey map, split to story-relevant progression missions and side quests, and an area to retake previous missions to grind up levels and obtain valuable resources if the story missions are too much to take on. Since this is mostly always the case, we need to grind these previous levels, which still pose a real threat, while the main story missions require a good team composition, preparation and maybe even a bigger brain, but not in my case, since I'm intelligenter than most. The tough combat sees our heroes take actions in order of their speed, with a time counter ticking down. Once a character's turn is up, they have three possible maneuvers to use, with a simple attack and two class-specific skills. Each hero can gain an additional spell, but more on the individual customization later. The combat is unforgiving and sometimes a bit unbalanced, and yet the game's strong suit. Apart from the mentioned skills and the typical health points, Dragon Chronicles Black Tears has another mechanic we need to keep in mind with the scaling contamination bar. A form of stress level, which in longer running dungeons is far more dangerous than the heavy hits enemies can deal. The higher this contamination bar gets, the more dangerous and yet beneficial it becomes, since every class benefits by increasing a specific stat. This sees a tank, for example, amping up his defensive numbers when reaching a high contamination. But once it reaches its pinnacle, a brand of death will be put on a specific hero, reducing the bar one last time, becoming a death counter, since another maxed out bar will lead to an instant demise. This differs from the reaction a bottom hitting health bar has. Once a hero's health point runs dry, it reaches a state of near death, allowing us to either save them with a resurrection potion or spell, while a quickly ending fight sees them get up as well. However, if we take too long, these characters go into the light for good. Deaths occur more often than a lie during a political debate. You are fake news. Social satire aside, we can revive fallen comrades in the village at the hero sanctuary, where we are also able to unlock new heroes. This process requires a specific resource we obtain on our travels called soul stones, which are accompanied by three more currencies with gold, wood and ore. Gold and soul stones are further used to enhance our hero skills buy out the merchant's inventory for potions, imprint stones and equipment, and are also used to unlock spells we as a player can use during a fight. These spells range from simple damaging attacks to healing abilities as well as reducing contamination. Wooden ore, however, are used to enhance the village's buildings, like the tavern, where we can lower the accumulated contamination of our heroes, or the divination hall, where we can attach imprint stones to our heroes, giving them more spells and specific passives to utilize during a run. These new spells are crucial to give us more flexibility for the four-man team compositions, since specific characters work best with each other. This for example sees Kelvastein and Hellkite being a power couple, with the former building up a stackable debuff, which gets activated by Hellkite for devastating combo attacks. At first, a limited amount of valid team combo sees us go into the dungeons with the same teams over and over again, before we can switch up teams with other heroes and their new skill sets. These dungeon runs, even though quite enjoyable, are a constant grind and one of the weaker parts, since we need a truckload of currency to unlock all heroes, level up their skills, free up more spells for us and so on. Continuing on the treadmill of weaker points, one of those can be found in the equipment our party gets to take on their runs, which sees us utilize a weapon, one armor and a few accessories to impact our team's power even further. This would be a great addition if the lack of equipment wasn't such an issue. After 8 hours of game time, I found only a handful of items, while two slots are still completely free 
since I haven't found one accessory at all. Adding up the actually great visuals, the intense combat system and decent customization options and subtract them by the heavy grind, lack of items and sometimes frustrating combat encounters sees Dragon Chronicles Black Tears being close to a real fun and a definite one once it addresses those issues. Would you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to eat some fruit.